Hi, this is Muho. Uh, it's September 6th. Yesterday our five-day session ended and in one month on October 8th we will have a great ceremony for Sawaki Roshi, Uchiyama Roshi and my teacher Miyaula Roshi. We commemorate, co commemorate uh, the 50th anniversary, anniversary of Sawaki Roshi's passing away. Uh, that was in December 1965. So it's only 49 years since Sawaki Roshi died, but in Japan you count uh, the year of the passing away. So in Japan this year would be the 50th uh, anniversary. And following the same logic, uh, it's the 17th uh, anniversary for Uchiyama, who passed away in 1998, and my teacher passed away 12 years ago, but we celebrate the 13th uh, anniversary. And there will be a lot of uh, preparations for the ceremony. We are changing the tatamis that uh, have never been renewed during these 40 years. They're kind of old and stinky now. Uh, we repair parts of the buildings. Also, we will have to harvest uh, some of the rice fields before the ceremony. There's still lots of bamboo to be transported. Um, well, lots of work uh, this month. Uh, today, I want to talk about a mail that I received during session uh, from uh, Brian Victoria who wrote a famous book about uh, Zen and war, about almost 20 years, I think, 20 years ago. And about seven years ago, I had an exchange uh, with Brian, and you can also find that in the archives of the Antaiji homepage. I will put a link uh, below this video, so you can find it. Um, there was a long silence between me and Brian, but now for the first time in seven years I got an uh, email from Brian and uh, he sent me links uh, to new articles that he wrote. Uh, one of them only a couple of days ago on the Sweeping Zen website. And he says, I have honestly attempted to present your position as accurately as I could. And says that to a certain extent uh, his position on Sawaki Roshi's wartime record has softened. He also then continues and writes, it remains my earnest hope, Musho, Muho Osho, that you and I may yet be reconciled with each other. I say this as a brother in the Dharma and also as someone who deeply appreciates the dedication to the Dharma you have exhibited at Antaiji. Still further, I think that both of us agree at the, that the present state of Soto Zen in Japan and elsewhere leaves very much to be desired. I sincerely hope that you and I together with others might work together in the future to restore the Zen school to an integral and honored place within the Buddha Dharma, though I think we both know how difficult that effort will be. And uh, in the end, he says, in any event, I sincerely hope we can now put this issue behind us and move on to address the present and the future. And I have to say that I really appreciate Brian's words. Mm. I was happy to get this mail and I went uh, to the Br uh, Sweeping Zen website and to other articles uh, that are linked uh, to uh, on the Sweeping Zen website. And although Brian writes here that he hopes to put uh, the whole issue behind us, um, it seems that basically we're still stuck where we ended seven years ago. Um, I do not agree with his uh, way of translating Sawaki and presenting him. But then um, I also have to say that I completely agree with Brian in that I do not think that what Sawaki Roshi said during the war was right. I completely agree with him that uh, Sawaki was wrong. When, for example, he said that the precept uh, to not kill is throwing the bomb. That's one of the famous uh, quotes. 
that uh, Brian makes. Read in context of the whole article, and I'm surprised that from the articles um, that Brian writes, it seems that he, he didn't even know the article as a whole when he included this famous uh, quote in his book. I'm surprised to learn that. Um, as a learned scholar, Brian didn't, wasn't aware of the article as a whole. Read as a whole, uh, Sawaki appears in a completely different uh, light. Uh, he never acts against the war. Sawaki certainly was not a pacifist. But he speaks out in what I think is a quite courageous way against the way the war was fought during the Second World War. And he kind of calls out and says that uh, the Japanese were not keeping to the rules. Um, but anyway, uh, putting that aside, I agree with Brian that Sawaki is wrong. Um, why was he wrong? Uh, to explain that, first I want to like to explain why Sawaki would say that the precept is throwing the bomb in the first place. Most people who hear that will be kind of completely mm, clueless. How would anybody say something like that? How can a precept throw a bomb in the first place? Um, in Zen, there's a expression called Zen Kai Ichinyo. Zen and the precepts are one. There's no difference between Zen and the precepts. Um, and to take that further, um, there's actually there's not 10 precepts or 248, but there's only one precept. And what is this one precept? It's the universe itself. Um, the universe itself is the precept. Reality itself is the precept. Um, to explain that, I might want to quote from a writing by Dogen Zenji. Uh, it's Shoji, the chapter Shoji from the Shobo Genzo. It can be translated as life and death. And in this chapter, Dogen Zenji says, This life and death is the life of the Buddha. Um, living and dying as we experience it now are both the same activity and Dogen Zenji calls this uh, the life of Buddha. You could also call it a universal force. There's only one universal force and we are also living, we are all living the same universal force. If we live or if we die and we're both living and dying in this one moment. Uh, these are two sides of the same coin and the coin is the life of the Buddha. In the case of Sawaki, he would say that the precept is this one coin. Life and death at this one moment is both expression of the precept. So to let live, when we let live or we give birth, that's also an expression of the life of the Buddha. The life of the Buddha through us creates new life. And then in extension of that, you could also say that dying, when we die, it's not that there's less life in the universe, but actually there's the life of the Buddha returning to the source. Okay, uh, my wife is just telling me that uh, the battery uh, is close to giving up. So I'm going to stop here and continue soon.